Hi, and welcome to another episode of System Sunday. Part of spring cleaning your cluttered digital space is having things set up so that you also have peace of mind, which creates more space in your cluttered life by not having to worry when things go wrong. I'm Lisa Wells, your virtual assistant trainer. Let's face it, files will accidentally get deleted. Your website will get or may have already been hacked you may or may not be in compliance with IRS regulations when it comes to file archival and retention. Your team may forget. You may have assumed backups were taking place and only when you went to restore something did you learn it was not being done. We are all human and things are gonna happen, which is why it's super important you have a backup plan. In this episode, we'll be talking about backup basics and contingency planning because I don't want you to be left unprepared and unprotected. I go over why you need a backup system, common myths, plus my four-point web security plan. I think we all know that we need to have a backup system in case of loss. Say you delete a file, computer breaks, or your hard drive goes bad, or you overwrote a file or a down website. Maybe you get hacked or someone injects spam into your site or otherwise your site is unusable. And finally, compliance. Business owners are required to keep business records for a required amount of time. The IRS and regulatory commissions don't care if you have a data disaster. All it means to them is that you're not compliant and they can come after you. So here are some of the more common reasons why people may not have a backup plan, what I call most popular excuses. One, I keep everything in the cloud. And cloud storage is great, but it only works for files and it's limited at that. So for example, if you are using Dropbox account and you overwrote a file and you wanna restore the file you had from six weeks ago, you can't do this. Second, hosting provider does it for me. I I had a client who believed that (laughs) and she thought someone on her team was doing her backups and only until we had to do a restore did she find out that it was not being done. And there could be other reasons. Maybe the restore service was limited, like the backup restore that your hosting provide is limited. Uh, Maybe it costs extra money that you didn't want to pay for an upgraded plan or otherwise it just didn't get activated. That's a very common reason. I use an external hard drive or you copy files to a hard drive. That's great as a secondary plan, but if a fire or flood happens and your external hard drive is located in the same area, there goes your data. So don't be passive about this very important part of your business. Have a plan in place in order to prepare because 10% of hard drives fail within three years Hackers are working 24 seven to mess with you and we are all human and we're gonna make a mistake at some point. Here's my four point web security plan. First is audit. You're gonna do an audit and during this auditing phase, you will track user accounts and all the items that you want to protect. So the first task is to write down the programs, services, hosting accounts, Uh, your list manager services, your shopping cart services, your shared files, and companies that you use to run your online business and where the program is located. So some examples are your hosting accounts, you know, where your web files are located, and shared files. Maybe you have a centralized online uh, folder via a secure site Or maybe right now they're all on your hard drive and what you do is you just email them to people on an as-needed basis. So just do an audit to put down what everything is that you want to protect and where it is. Next is plan. Of course, the best route to protection is through planning and prevention. But the problem is this. We don't know what this means exactly. So during the planning phase, you will write procedures for preventing, detecting, and responding to web security threats. You will also provide your team members with a standard operating procedure. So a typical example is that the business owner assumes that their virtual assistant is backing up their site 
only to find out too late that this isn't the case. This is why it's important that the business owner create the plan so that the team may follow it. Don't leave anything to chance. This is your business. So here's where we get into the meat of a security plan. Take a look at your audit list. You will be creating your security plan and business standard operating procedure based on that list. This plan should include at a minimum a backup strategy, a user accounts policy, password policy, a badware or malware prevention and protection, business continuity plan, team roles and responsibilities, and finally, file organization and structure. So basically, it is a business setup, contingency plan, and operating procedures all rolled into one. Next is execute. Executing your plan is where you will communicate with your staff, your team members, you're gonna train where necessary and then carry out the plan. A good backup strategy includes on-site backup and off-site or remote backup and includes local files as well as remote files. So I'm gonna use my business as an example. Like many of you, have a, I use a laptop computer and I use the WordPress platform for my business websites. So for the files on my laptop, I use Carbonite, which it's a software program. It automatically backs up all of my files on a daily basis. Uh, if I accidentally deleted or overwrote a file, I can restore it from the backup that I did a day ago or a week ago. And this is automatically done. It's stored on their service, on their servers. So it's always protected. I also use Dropbox for archival storage, and in case something happens to my computer, I can always get access to client files pretty quickly, just using another com computer because all the files are synced to the cloud. So that's kind of my, my plan for files that are on my laptop. And because WordPress is, a, is the most popular platform, I'm gonna use that as an example. So there are a lot of WordPress plugins that do backups. And the great thing is that there are some really good ones out there that are free. One of them is Updraft Plus, and I'm gonna put this in the resources area so don't you don't have to worry about writing all this down. It's a very popular pr uh, plugin and it's free. So it allows you to create a complete backup of your WordPress site and store it on the cloud, or you can download it to your computer so you can store it somewhere else, say on Dropbox or Amazon. The plugin supports scheduled backups as well as on-demand backups. So say you want to have, a, you're gonna do something and it says, oh, make a backup before you do it, you can do an on-demand backup. And you can also um, schedule your backups too. You also have the option to choose which files you wanna backup. It can automatically upload your backups to Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon S3, Rackspace, or FTP, email, and several other cloud storage services. Besides backing up each WordPress uh, website, Updraft Plus also allows you to easily restore backups directly from your WordPress admin panel. It is free, but it also has a premium version with add-ons to migrate or clone websites. Super handy if you're moving from one site to another, or you wanna make a copy of something, or say you're changing your name, it has database search and replace, multi-site support, and several other features. So there is a, a premium paid version you can get as well. No matter which plugin you choose, make sure it will allow you to schedule your backups so that you aren't having to remember to do this every day. And also be sure to store your files that are created during the backup in a place that's separate from your website. So for example, store the files in a Dropbox folder and not in a subdirectory of where your website is hosted. Because if, say, if your host goes down, you can't access your, your files anyway. As for the schedule, you can, you can always check with your hosting company to see if they do this for you. And if they do, ask about, is it automatic? When is it done? What's included? How to go about doing a restore? Make sure you know all this up front so that you're not you know, at the, in times of emergency, not knowing what you need to do. If you are gonna use the plugin, 
You can set the schedule for a daily or weekly full backup with a daily database backup. So if you're not familiar with WordPress backups, there's going to be a setup guide that will walk you through this. But generally speaking, a WordPress website is made up of two things. It's got your files and it's got your database. So you want to make sure to back up everything. If you use different types of hosting platforms other than WordPress, do a Google search to see what backup systems are recommended, but the same backup strategy can be applied no matter the method. Finally, we have monitor. The final part of the security plan involves updating and modifying the plan as changes occur in your business, such as adding new programs or services, or if you bring on new team members or change their roles. Here is an example of what you can include in your security plan for this section. For, uh, say you have a maintenance and monitoring section, you have two team members, Joey and Anne. What you can do is have Joey be responsible for security on a day-to-day -day basis, with Anne taking the overall responsibility. Joey will monitor virus logs and backup status, on a monthly basis and we'll make sure that WordPress sites and plugins are all up to date and that the backup and restore procedures are working properly. On a quarterly basis, Anne will conduct an audit on user accounts and change passwords for all the administrator accounts. Anne will be responsible for ensuring that new team members are fully trained in the company's security policies and procedures. So this is a really good uh, standard operating procedures that you can include in your maintenance and monitor monitoring uh, procedure section. If you enjoyed this episode and want a shortcut in creating and documenting your security plan, check out my training guide, Creating Your Small Business Web Security Plan. After you complete this training guide and implement the easy strategies and how-tos, you will have a sound security plan, be able to implement secure policies for your team, and or your clients, and you will have peace of mind. You can find a link to the product below or visit my VA Business Builder Boutique by clicking on shop in the menu bar. Join us next time as we continue our spring cleaning series Well, I'll show you the art of unfollowing on social media. See you then.